Hello and thank you for joining me today for today's lesson. Today we have a question, just a single question for Lantos with a very long answer that accompanies it. Uh, the question that Cindy asked Lantos was about I Ching. So some of you are familiar with this. It is uh, a teaching a body of knowledge that has been around for thousands of years, especially in the Far East. And she asked whether it was possible to find two values of fullness within the spin keys. Because uh, we have, as you recall in our spin keys, we have waxing, full, and waning. Three different spins of the spin keys. But I Ching uh, had two different spins that made up full. It separated out full into two different spins. Uh, if you think of the moon wings, and you remember that full is represented by one moon wing looking like this and one like this. So one being waxing and one being waning. Um, but it could be the other way around. The other one could be waxing and the first one waning. Both of those give us the answer of full. So I Ching shows both of those as being two separate values. So Cindy asked if it was possible to find the two values of fullness within the spin keys. But then she also asked, and let me just uh, preface this question, this part of the question, by saying those of you in China will absolutely know what I'm talking about when I say this question. Those of you in America, well, if you happen to have an extensive knowledge of Chinese culture and history, you will also know what I'm talking about. But for the rest of you, which is nearly all of us, you will have no idea what this question means. But that is okay, because the answer is still illuminating. The question was, Cindy asked about the monkey from the Chinese story of the monkey, the pig, and the fish. So there is a story, and I will not go into detail on it because I myself don't know this story. I know about it. I know some of the details, but I don't know enough to tell you about it. Uh, so instead of my getting any of the details wrong, if you're interested, you can just look it up. But this is a famous story. It is one of just a few stories, three or four stories, that nearly every single person in China knows about. And Cindy had asked Tote about, uh, about this story of the monkey, the pig, and the fish, and whether or not it related to what we're doing with the Song of the Spheres, the spin keys. And Tote said yes. He said that truth can survive longer when it is in the form of story. Sometimes, sometimes truth lasts longer when it is in the form, told in the form of a story. And then Tote went on at length about some of those elements of the story. I'll give those answers to you uh, in the next couple of lessons. Uh, we'll figure out where to fit them in. But this one is from Lantos, and he was talking about these two questions, about I Ching finding two different values of full, as well as about the monkey from this particular story. Lanto said, it is not the same thing. It is a different thing. Knowledge which satisfies the need of the time. At different times, different values of knowledge are offered. There is an inseparable connection between knowledge and the age, the time. New knowledge brings about a new time, and certain times allow for certain knowledge. Both ways, the connection is seen both ways. In this time, the existence of full was not expressed. Instead, this position, this value within the spin keys of creation, was expressed as the combined values of waxing and waning. So, let me just interrupt there for a second and say that what Lantos is saying is in the days of I Ching, when I Ching was created, full was not actually recognized. They did not have the knowledge of full. What they had was the knowledge of the two parts. 
and if you add up those two parts, you get something awfully close to full. So they had part one, waxing, part two, waning, and part three, and part four, waxing and waning together to create full. That was I Ching. This is Lantos continuing. This combination produces a version of full, of full, a type of full. Yet it is not the same form as expressed through the value of full itself. It is a material fullness which is formed through the balance of expressed matter. Without the knowledge of the realm lords, this is the expression of the creation. The reflection appears the same, or should we say very, very similar. One cannot easily distinguish the difference on the level of the reflection. Therefore, fullness in this early period, earlier period was expressed in this way. It was simply recognized as the combined value of two expressed forms. Matter dominates. One may gain great knowledge from the reflection of the source. Yet, the experience of the source remains hidden beyond the realm of experience. Monkey realizes emptiness. Monkey perceives the value of emptiness. Therefore, monkey perceives the source. Emptiness is not found within the realm of reflection. Fullness is not truly experienced within the realm of reflection. The experience of fullness in the realm of reflection is limited. This experience of monkey shatters the validity of reflection seen as totality. For in the field of reflection, there can be only the material combinations of values. In this, one may, easily, one may be easily misled into believing that fullness is formed out of a balance of two expressed values, two material values, waxing, waning. We are so fortunate. We have received fullness in the reflection. In the reflection, fullness is presented as a form distinct from the assembly of two material forms. Reflected fullness illumines the path. Reflected fullness points the way to the source of this reflection of fullness. In the reflection, two parts of the moon may appear to be the value of the full moon. Yet this experience is full. This vision is of this experience of full, this vision of full will not lead to the realization of the full moon. The realization will be of two parts which combine into a form of full. There will be no realization of the true value of full itself. The value of fullness of all and fullness of nil. Full all, full nil. Only through the reflection of fullness is the path illumined. The path of 81. We are most fortunate. The path of 81 leads directly to the source, directly to the goal. This is the path to holy vision. This is the path to realizing two values of fullness. This experience is available only when one goes beyond the realm of reflection, when one goes beyond the realm of the material expression of spin keys. When one initiates spin of the way, one is released. One is freed from this realm of reflection. One enlivens not only the energies contained within the spin keys, one enlivens the realm Lord, thereby gaining the fullness of the seed. One gains the fullness of the experience of 81 seeds, 81 seeds of creation. This leads directly to the goal. This is the path to holy vision. The song enlivens all 81 seeds. This is the glory of the great fullness of knowledge. It is the glory of the knowledge of fullness. We are so fortunate in this time. It is the time of fullness of knowledge. In this time, fullness may be achieved by all. Very good. Many blessings. Okay, everyone. Thanks for being with me today, and I'll talk to you in a few days.